longest off season in FIU history. We are back. So, like, we did it for the university. As James Morgan is going to the Jets. What a catch! Are you kidding? Joseph with nobody in front of him. Flex Joseph with the football. Flex at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Flex Joseph has taken it to the house for the opening kickoff. This is Jones. And he's loose. And he's 10. And he's touchdown. 15, 10, 5. Over. End zone up for you. Touchdown, Panthers. This should be a loud and fun environment. The emergence of playmakers on both sides of the football continued at Ricardo Silva Stadium Saturday. Encouraging signs as the young season continues this week. Formidable challenge awaiting on the road. No time to linger on the setback. It's full speed ahead on the practice field and film room as FIU seeks to move forward in a notable way this Saturday at Charlotte. Well, welcome into FIU Panther Talk alongside head coach Butch Davis. I'm AJ Ricketts. 31-28 the final score Saturday against MTSU. No doubt about it. Games like that leave a bitter taste. However, nearly able to overcome that with, with the rushing yeah. attack this past yeah. week. And Devontae Price did it again. I'll talk about Sean Peterson in a second. But as we look at the highlights of Devontae Price, his second consecutive 100-plus yard game. But she had 112 on Saturday. He's fourth in the country in yards per carry at 10 yards and, and now has more rushing yards in two games than all of last season. Yeah, well, I'm really proud. I said it two weeks ago about him that obviously he's the featured senior running back. And the thing that he's probably doing as good as I've ever seen him do is his vision. Obviously, when you're a running back and you're hitting the line of scrimmage, there may be an intended place that you'd like for the ball to go. But if it's blocked up, he's, he's got enough vision to be able to bounce outside, as you see right there, and take it to the long distance. And, uh, you know, people don't realize he was a great hurdler in high school. He was a sprinter. And you can see now that a lot of these home runs, a lot of these long runs that he's given, you're, he's getting a chance to show the kind of speed that he has. Yeah, he went to the state finals in the 110-meter hurdles. You, you, you find all the guys that make the state finals. <laughs> I love multi-sported <laughs> yeah. players. Yeah. I mean, I really do because especially in track, I mean, guys that are long jumpers, high jumpers, it says an yeah. awful lot about their athletic ability. Yeah, that ability transfers over to the football field. Yep. The other guy who had a great performance, no doubt his best in an FIU uniform, Sean Peterson yeah. Jr. He, he is making his mark now as an FIU Panther. Obviously a career high for Sean Peterson Jr. He went for 117, his first 100-yard game at FIU. And again, I'll reference it once more like I did last week. 2019, Peterson at 32 yards. He had more than that in one carry last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, Sean, he flashed last year, but obviously there was a lot of seniors on the team yeah. at the running back position, but we knew in the future this was going to be an impactful football player. He's strong, he's fast, uh, he can catch the ball, and one of the things, just like we bragged a little bit about Devontae Price, he did a great job, Sean did, on blitz pickup and on pass protection. I mean, and that's kind of where, if you're a complete player and we don't have to worry about them not being in a situation that you got to get them out because they can't catch or they can't blitz pickup, uh, he did a great job and very very proud of him yeah 6'3 230 I think he'll, yeah. he'll pick up those blitz as well and he was yep. laying a shoulder at the end of a lot of runs too uh, never, not the easiest day for the defensive mm -hmm. backs to deal with a guy like Sean Peterson jr. Yeah. we talked about uh, let's flip over to this the, the defensive side sure. here in the, in the secondary I want to start off with Josh Turner yeah. certainly may, a guy that may have had uh, a tough going of it week one uh, in our first game at Liberty but I think a lot of people think look He's from Iowa, Big Ten transfer. He's got to be the guy. That was his first start since high school. I know. He's playing yeah. a bigger role now. Yeah. And, you know, the pass interference penalties got beat for a touchdown last week. This this week, first pass, he has that interception right there and was targeted three times in man coverage, all of them in completion. Yeah, I tell you what, one of the things that you really like about him, I mean, he made great tackles. Not only did he make that interception, but he did a great job with the return. He, he played great on that. He's a good contributor to special teams. And one of the things that I love about Josh is, is when we practice, Practice. He wants to go against our best players all the time, whether it's J.J. Holman, whether it's Bryce Singleton, when it was Shamar Thornton, because that's how you get better is you challenge yourself during the course of the week to go against the, the best players on our team, and you love the competition. And I think uh, the performance that he had this past Saturday shows what kind of player that he can be. What was your evaluation of the secondary in general? I know he had those two interceptions in the first quarter, um, yeah. humbled at, at Liberty, but I think overall you look at the drive sequences and what they were able to do, 
it, it was a much more impressive performance. Yeah, significantly. Yeah. There's a lot of things that we did really, really good on defense. The two things that we didn't do well, and, and it's going to be a it's going to be a challenge every week that we've got to get better. Is there's a lot of quick throws. Quarterbacks are going to get the ball out of their hands, whether it's bubble screens, hitches, and those things. We've got to do a great job on tackling. If you're in the secondary, you're not going to shut somebody down the entire day. You're not going to tackle them for no gain. It's okay sometimes for them to make three, four, five yards on a bubble screen, but you can't miss the tackle. We had 10 missed tackles for over 114 yards. If we can eliminate some of that or half of that, it makes a gigantic difference in the outcome of the game. Yeah, we were discussing that very point in the broadcast booth Saturday, you know, flipping it between man and zone coverages, sure. and that certainly prevented a little bit more on the outside, but eventually it comes to execution yeah. and, and making those tackles. Talking about the defense overall, though, Five of the final six defensive possessions were punts yeah. before their Middle Tennessee's final touchdown. Yeah. And three of the first four possessions were either an interception yeah. or a punt. They're on the field a lot, but we're able to make a lot of things sure. happen too. You know, AJ, I mean, when we took the lead with like 11 seconds to go in the third quarter, it's 28 to, to uh, 24. Yeah. The next six possessions were all punts. Yeah. We punted three, they punted three. And obviously, you get a chance if you have that drive and you're leading by four points, drive, make first downs, and eat the clock up. There was like We were down to like seven minutes left to go in the game. If you can make a couple more first downs and maybe put more points, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, you can win that game. And that's where we got to finish. We've got to make sure that we do those things in the last two possessions, not only both defensively but offensively. Yeah, I maybe mean, not necessarily even happen to score that touchdown your reference another first down maybe they're dealing with first and ten at their own 15 with three and sure. a half minutes then then a little further up the field yep. with five minutes to go but certainly things to, it's only week three upcoming for FIU and we'll talk about that against Charlotte when we come back but first our FIU Panther talk trivia as we had to break we referenced how our two guys Devonte and Sean both rushed for a hundred plus yards on Saturday our trivia question who were the last pair of Panthers to achieve that very same feat answer coming up after the break on FIU Panther talk with Butch Davis They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the FIU Panthers are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Grief Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Grief is the official mover of the FIU Panthers. Let Good Grief be your official mover, too. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. Great teachers change lives. Great teachers change lives. Great teachers change lives. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Thank you, Coach Holman. Thank you, Tennis and Bernie. Thank you, Ms. Faulkner. You're the one that pushed me to do better. You taught me the life lesson to never give up, and for that, I thank you. You are the one who taught me how to persevere. Teaching profession is such an important, selfless job. I thank you for everything you've done for me. I'm Lina Bernier Colon. My name is Derek Cartaya. My name is Yolanda Arbalat. My name is Alec Dominguez. And I'm from Barcelona, Spain. And I'm from Venezuela. My dad is Cuban and my mom is from Spain. It means coming from very strong people with a lot of passion and a lot of love to give. It's an honor and it means a lot. To be Hispanic, it really has, it's a pride thing for me, coming from a Cuban uh, father and a Mexican mother, really, they instill those Hispanic values and the culture. You have that pride that you come from a place with such rich and diverse culture. Since I was a kid, my family, the most important value they taught me was how to be humble. No matter how I got here and where I am right now, never forget where I'm from and everything I had to go through to get where I am today. Being part of an Hispanic family, 
um, allows me to be here and be proud of what I'm doing. It started with my grandfather coming to the United States. He basically worked to give my dad everything he could for my dad to be successful. And basically now I bring that to the baseball field, working hard every single day to earn everything I can on the baseball field. Growing up, like I always was taught that you had to be respectful to others, you had to work hard, don't give up, always put your best foot forward, and always just smile and be nice to others. The vibe is great. Everyone just gets along like, oh my god, you're from here, I'm from here. And it's just like we share cultures and it's like, it's, it's great. Values that I got from my family well, has always been respect, like you said. It's been working hard, dedication to what you do. FIU very much complements that uh, culture and tradition. You just look outside, outside the stadium, you have the giant uh, Cuban uh, flag memorial out there and you can see how ingrained FIU is in with the Hispanic community. Our swim team, for instance, has people from all over the world. You know, our volleyball team has people from all over the world. So it's kind of cool to see how everybody comes together, you know, for like a common love or a common goal. There is so much variety here and so much acceptance for that variety and so much love for it. And it's something that as a university, it embraces very much. And there hasn't been a moment where I haven't felt accepted or embraced or even, you know, Cherish. All right, great to see that profile there. Certainly Hispanic Heritage Month, very notable down here at FIU where the <laughs> student population is 64% Hispanic. But you've had a couple stints down here in South Florida and Miami. When you live down here, you're automatically immersed in the culture. Yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> Obviously, you know, when I first moved down here, I was a little bit surprised at how big the Latin population yeah. was. And I really, truly, I tried to take, I'd taken Spanish in high school and stuff, but I tried to t enroll in a class to take it at nighttime oh, yeah. because I wanted to be really, be able to be comfortable throughout Dade County. Then when when you come back a little bit later, it's even significantly more. Yeah. Uh, my son is full. Uh, he can do all uh, Spanish. He can do very good with the language and stuff. Uh, I'm getting him to try to teach me. I can do poquito, just oh, a little go. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm best with ordering food. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's probably not good yeah. for myself. I'll take that moment. It's a good segue to remind you. Panther Talk brought to you by Cafe Bustelo. Let's go to our FIU Panther Talk trivia question. Let's follow that up here. Uh, question, Devontae Price and Sean Peterson Jr. both went for 100 plus this past weekend against Middle Tennessee. When was the last time that happened? Uh, we have to go back to the last season. I guess the team we're about to play once more. Charlotte's, you had Napoleon Maxwell and Anthony Jones both run for 100 plus against the 49ers. And it was a nice game on the ground for them. I think, Anthony, I think uh, Devontae Price had 84 as well. So he, he, he nearly got over 100. Uh, it was a nice showing on the ground for both those two last season. All right, let's preview Charlotte. A nice segue to that. 49ers, uh, one and two on the season. They had a pair of games canceled, Georgia State and North Carolina, so they weren't able to get that non-conference game, but they performed well against App State. Uh, com competitive game uh, against Florida Atlantic, but most recently they put all the pieces together. Yeah. Uh, on the road in Denton against North Texas. Put up 49 points as we take a look at some of the highlights. Reynolds is the guy that really drives the engine of that Charlotte offense. Will Healy is doing great things there. Uh, Coach, initial impressions of what you've seen out of yeah, Charlotte? Yeah, obviously, I mean, you know, they had a significant start against FAU. They had an early lead, then they ended up losing the game, a close game. But in the game against North Texas, who's been one of the best programs in Conference USA, I mean, they absolutely blew them out on uh, offensively. They, uh, they ran the ball extraordinarily well. The quarterback did some explosive big-time plays down the field. Uh, they had good in the passing game, and their defense really put an awful lot of pressure on North Texas. They had a hard time moving the football, and, uh, you know, it was very impressive for performance uh, you know from Charlotte yeah 599 yards yeah. total offense and the only reason it wasn't 600 plus was because of the final kneel downs at, yeah, the, exactly. <laughs> at the end of the game and you look at their touchdown drives uh, look at the numbers I think the longest one I see here is 313 also had TD drives at 205 58 seconds 56 seconds you know mm -hmm. they're going to take some home run sure. shots uh, probably incorporate some dink and dunks mm -hmm. and some screen passes like we saw against Middle Tennessee as well but they yeah. have much more of a proclivity to, to try to throw the ball down the field yeah they really do and one of the things that they do that's a little bit unusual is is that they play a multiple different kinds of personnel groupings they play one of the groupings where they have six offensive linemen in the game they take the tight end out and the H back yeah. out and they put another big offensive lineman in the game to play the tight end role 
to try to really run the ball and max protect, give them a chance to uh, take shots down the field. Then they'll go with four wide receivers like almost everybody else in the country does. They try to get the ball out on the perimeter as fast and as quick as they can. One of the things that really showed up is speed. You saw speed on jet sweeps. You saw speed on the wide receivers going deep down the field. The running back is very, very difficult. Once they spread you out and the four wide receivers, that running back is fast enough and quick enough to make plays in the running game. Yeah, no Benny LeMay for the 49ers this year, but that ground game can still cause plenty of damage uh, moving forward. Uh, one thing athletes will do is maybe watch highlights of themselves before a game to get in good spirits before that contest. So we're going to watch some good highlights from through the years of this FIU Charlotte matchup. The past three seasons, well, most of them have been close contests. We can flash back to last year, as we just referenced, the back to the 100 plus yard games from Napoleon Maxwell and Anthony Jones. It was a comfortable victory at home. But right after Charlotte had put up big numbers on the ground there, you see the big burst from Anthony Jones late in that game, a 48-23 win, 350 rushing yards on the ground for FIU. Maxwell had 114, Jones 117. 2018, Butch, this was a barn burner. Oh. Remember this one, Sage, taking it back, had a, had a late hit on him after that, but this kind of set the tone. It was, it was going to be a back-and-forth affair up there. It absolutely was, and it was a great, great performance by Sage. He played great, not only at the linebacker position, but picking up that ball and getting it into the end zone. Here, obviously, uh, Anthony down, Jones, yeah. yeah, Anthony Jones down in there. I mean, getting him back last year to get a chance to play his senior year was awesome. That was terrific. He had, he had a breakout performance coming back in, in that game, two touchdowns. Napoleon Maxwell helped seal the deal in the fourth quarter. We took a two touchdown lead three times in the second half and Charlotte cut it to one TD three yep. times but we were able to get out of there with a 42-35 victory. Lewis had that 61 yard fumble recovery. Napoleon thrust for 102 but this one was probably even more dramatic. <laughs> this was when we were down 12 nothing. The trick play T.O. Thomas Owens with the pass to Julian Williams and and there were going to be plenty more fireworks from there. You remember drawing that one up? That was one of the better trick plays it we've was. seen. He did, did a terrific job. Julian made a great throw. I mean, obviously, sometimes you see a wide receiver and the ball flutters like a duck, but he, he made a great I throw. He put that. that on the money. I think Absolutely. he played a little QB in high school. I can't remember. This was at his more uh, his normal yeah. position, a wide out, getting six points in the end zone. We were down 29 to 14, and Alex Magoo took over the scramble, the dive to the pylon. Yeah. And, and that wasn't even the, the toughest play he probably had. We'll see it in a second. I mean, he was so resilient. That capped an eight-play, 94-yard drive with that touchdown. And uh, the final drive here in the fourth quarter for FIU going out. Austin Maloney making a huge play. There were a lot of deep balls yeah. in that game. Austin Maloney making some big plays. This probably caused you to grow some gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> How about that hurdle? That'll, we'll I, never I, forget it. He, he looks like he was a 110-meter uh, hurdler yeah. out of high school <laughs> and stuff like that. But what a great – you know, athlete that, that Alex was. He's a terrific leader, an excellent quarterback. He did a great job throwing the ball. Words you love to hear when you're on the defensive side late in the game, wide right. Wide that Nigel right. McCauley missed it from 48, and a lot of emotion coming yeah. from Butch Davis, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's going through your head, Butch? No no expression. Wide right. I liked, <laughs> I liked hearing that for the other team. Yeah, you just wanted to see the final kneel down, and then, yeah. then, then a smile would come, come from you there. 30-29. to 29 was the final score back in uh, 2017. Hope and improve to 4-0 and since Butch has been here since Charlotte this upcoming weekend. All right, special teams has been a great facet of FIU's play through two weeks. Harrison Green, a big part of that. We go mic'd up with Harrison, just named to 24-7 uh, Sports Top 30 Coaches Under 30. He's got the face mask. He's got the, the mic. And he's got, he's got the feature coming up on FIU Family Talk. Right, full speed. Full speed, two's on deck. Hey, let's go. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the FIU Panthers are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Grief Moving and Storage is a team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Grief is the official mover of the FIU Panthers. Let Good Grief be your official mover, too. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. Great teachers change lives. Great teachers change lives. Great teachers change lives. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Thank you, Coach Holman. Thank you, Tennyson Bernie. Thank you, Ms. Faulkner. You're the one that pushed me to do better. You taught me the life lesson to never give up, and for that, I thank you. You are the one who taught me how to persevere. Teaching the profession is such an important, selfless job. I thank you for everything you've done for me. Bésame 
bendito. Como huele rico de cafecito. Be bésame, bendito. Dale, 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 dale. Un boom a ritmo, miro. Giro, listo, sí, no. Ándale, pues, anda, ándale, pues. Ándale, pues, anda, ándale, pues. Another solid performance out of the special teams. Flex got loose a couple times on the ground once again in the kick return game. Harrison Green's been a big part of that. Our new special teams coach. We go mic'd up with Coach Green and the special teams. I want you to open with your dudes over there. I want you to open up this way with your eyes back over your left shoulder. The first two are two step. Good. Hey, the technique's good though. Live, full speed. Full speed, two's on deck. Hey, let's go get it, man. Hey, Gloucester, good job, man. Hey, you should be at six, not 70. Move up. We've got 25 minutes, and then we're going punt. What I would like to do is work with you, and you guys just get yourself warm. I'm mic'd up, so you can have some fun today. Right? Say, hi, say hi to your mom or something. All right, Shagstein, I'll take you. Let's just put him down at the 40. I'll take the bag. Let's get your toes at 14. Get your left foot on his knee. For the inside tip of the right bag. Down. Get a yellow. Sit. Better. Better. Here we go. Down. Get a yellow. Sit. I've never coached kickers. I've done special teams, but when I did, I was coaching the DB. So you gotta learn to hang out a little bit. They're they're different personality types. So kind of coaching a bunch of bunch of jabronis, but we have fun. We're going to have a 53 or whatever. What happens if we don't? If I don't, then it might be a 60. Okay. We have a 53-yard average today. We, we won't do the laps that we have to do. He never he never walks with me. Let's see if he walks with me. He showed up today. Okay, usually go to the ball. All right. Jaywalk, you're up, right? Yes, sir. I'm going mic up. We're mic'd up. We're mic'd up. Might need to give a shout out to my guy Owen. Owen, what's up, man? It's a good ball. It's a good start on the 53, man. Good ball, Tommy. Really good ball. Yeah, if you're if you're gonna coach special teams, you've got to be willing to hang out with the jabronis a, <laughs> a, a little bit. And once again, the current theme of shout out to mom. Harrison recognized that one too. Uh, he's done a great job since joining the staff. Yeah. It's his second stint on the staff here. He's done great things in the different programs and, and certainly contributing to what we're doing on special teams. Yeah, you here. know, AJ, obviously, one of the things, he got an opportunity to be a graduate assistant here on the defensive side in 2017. And he made a huge impact on me in watching him, his passion to coach. I mean, he really, truly loves it. He's got he's attention to detail, and if you're going to be a special teams coordinator, that's got to be a, the top of the line is making sure that you cover everything because special teams is the fastest, quickest way to lose games. You get punts blocked, you give up big yards on punt returns and kickoff returns. It puts your offense and defense in the in the hole all day long. And I really appreciate him being here. Uh, it was you know kind of a weird situation. Obviously, the loss of Aubrey Hill you know was sad, and uh, but being able to get him to come back into the program and I think our players have bought into absolutely everything you can see the results in the two ball games the kickoff returns have been outstanding the punting has been good uh, freshman kicker is now eight for eight on extra points so I mean he's having an impact in, in this football program yeah he's helping you navigate and get through that that the season when you have the freshman kicker you need, sure. <laughs> you need a yeah. assistance and Chase done a great Makes job you not sleep good at night yeah, sometimes yeah that's funny and he's got that face shield rock I think he's one of the only guys with a face shield it's not fogging <laughs> up it's still it's Still good to go through a couple weeks of play. Uh, Butch, big picture, mm -hmm. 34 points and 28 points in the first two weeks when we've had this little yeah. this QB cycle trying to figure out who's going to be our guy. I, I think when you look at that from a macro perspective, you know, the rotation still averaging over 30 points per game, that, that's got to be encouraging moving forward to think, yeah. hey, you know, our ground game, our offensive line's creating holes. If we can figure out our quarterback situation, we can yeah. continue to put up points yeah. at a high level. And that's the biggest thing, AJ, on the offensive side of it is we we can't just be one-sided. I yeah. mean, you can't count on the fact that you're going to rush for 250 yards and and throw for less than 100. I mean, yeah. you need to really truly be balanced. And sometimes when coaches say balanced, you know, fans and people think, well, you, we 
we want to run it 32 times, we want to throw it 32 times. That's not really right. it. You want to be balanced and that the defense has to respect and defend everything. We've got some talented wide receivers. We've got some talented running backs and tight ends that can catch the ball. Our offensive line is big and strong enough that we can do the protection part of it. we got to take advantage of some field positions. We've had opportunities in two games in a row, a kickoff return that's gotten us out to near the 50-yard line and go three and out. Those are, you got to be able to drive and put points on the board. we got to eliminate some of the three and outs because obviously, again, you're going to have some of those during the course of the game because the other team's talented. they got some people playing defense, but when you get field position and you get good opportunities, you need to, to put more points on the board and you've got we've got to improve uh, in the passing game. That's got to be a major focus over the rest of the season. One more guy I want to reference before we wrap things up uh, with final impressions on Charlotte. A guy that scored his first touchdown on Saturday, Nate Jefferson yeah. as well. Kind of got confused. We ran the jet sweep a number of times with flex. I, I thought it was, it was flex and then I said, no, <laughs> Nate Jefferson has his first touchdown yeah. as an FIU Panther. No. He's got great speed. I think he's a 4-3-8-40 guy, so yeah. you're using him effectively, getting him on the sweep and yeah, into the I mean, end zone. He's a young guy, and, and he's he's creating those roles. I mean, one of the things when you have freshmen or redshirt freshmen and guys that haven't played an awful lot, for them to get a feel for how hard you have to prepare, how hard you have to play, that stuff just didn't happen by, by magic. I mean, and he made a great run on the jet sweep. He cut it back, and he got it into the end zone. That was very impressive by him. All right, final thoughts here as we wrap up on FIU Parent to Talk. Uh, Will Healy's doing a good job trying to engineer a similar yep. turnaround in, at Charlotte as he had at Austin P. to put it in context. Austin P. had one win in three years before he got there. Then he picked up, uh, I think, 13 in two seasons. Sure. So obviously a talented track record. They love to play up tempo, up pace. Uh, what's going to what's going to take to be successful in keys yeah. to the game against well, Charlotte that, this week? That's obviously you just referenced it, but I'm going to tell you one of the things that jumps out at me. Defensively, they are dramatically more improved defensively. This is the best looking defense that I have seen them have sure. in the four years that I've been here. They like to blitz. They like to bring pressure. They got good defensive linemen that can anchor the, the line of scrimmage. They'll load the box up to try to stop the run, and they'll put pressure on the outside. They'll pressure your wide receivers, and they'll see if you can beat them. Well, we're looking forward to this weekend in North Carolina. Long way to go this season. You just have to go back to last year after the first two games. One four out of the next five. So looking forward to seeing how the guys can improve and get better week after week. Thanks for joining us on FIU Panther Talk this week. Alongside Butch Davis, I'm A.J. Ricketts. Long way left to go. Looking forward to this weekend in Charlotte against the 49ers. They've had a lot of success against them this past few years. We hope to continue that this weekend. We'll see you next time on FIU Panther Talk. It ain't about anybody else. Flex Joseph with nobody in front of him. Flex Joseph with the football. Flex at the 20, 15, 10. Five Flex Joseph has taken it to the house for the opening kickoff. This is Jones. And he's loose. And he's 10. And he's touchdown. 15, 10, 5, forward. End zone FIU. Touchdown Panthers. This should be a loud and fun environment. Mental health affects us all, whether you finish first or last, whether you win or lose. The stigma around these issues causes those around us